What is up there everyone? Welcome here to another video on my YouTube channel. For about a year now, I've been in a committed relationship with someone, a very amazing person. And I know while being one year might sound like, ah, you don't have too much trouble then, you know, um, but I would argue against that. The euphoric high, the stage that you're in when you first meet someone and when you're first, you know, dating someone, only lasts for a couple of months and then it kind of fades away so i would say i'm definitely out of that stage with my girlfriend once you're out of that you start to know and see each other more and also the mistakes and the flaws that everyone that you both have you know uh and there i would say if the foundation of your relationship meaning like good communication and some other tools and systems that i want to share in here that i would say really helped us me and my girlfriend to build a very strong uh, foundation if the foundation isn't strong then you know it's very easy to well to be in a very unhappy relationship or to just in the end yeah end up not being together anymore right if you might be in an unhappy relationship these tools and systems might completely change it if you're with someone and you have a generally okay relationship or a good one this will just help to add up to the foundation and just help you to have an even better relationship together. A last note that I'd just like to share is that by no means by making a video about relationships, I want to come across like I'm an expert on relationships or that me and my girlfriend don't have ups and downs in our relationship. We totally have. I'm not an expert also. Uh, to make that clear. These are just things that I, after having done it now a complete year with my girlfriend, can say that it has really improved our relationship as a couple. And therefore, I just want to share it out there in the world so you can as well benefit from it. So with that, let us start with the tool category and let's uh, dive into the first one. And I recommend this to everyone almost that I know who is in a relationship with someone. And that is a card game called The End. Now, very simply, the card game consists of 199 questions. Uh, now, these are actually very deep and well thought out questions. This is such a wonderful game if you're able both to just listen, communicate and do something about, you know, the answer that comes out of it, out of the question. Uh, that has significantly just improved our relationship together by because I just know my girlfriend on a whole nother level because of this card game. and. She knows me on a whole nother level because of it as well. I have actually heard some people call this card game, very interestingly enough, dangerous. If you call this dangerous, that's such a clear sign to me that you're not honestly communicating about all the needs and wants in your relationship. Yes, this is not always comfortable to answer certain questions uh, or, you know, certain questions might be triggering about something. But that's actually the point that you can confront things together and uncover things that could improve your relationship by actually doing something about them. And the only way to do something about them is to clearly communicate them out. If you cannot honestly answer how you feel or think or what your needs are in, in your relationship, you don't have a great foundation. Me and my girlfriend play this a lot, like almost every week a few times we play it. And you don't have to go through all of them at once, right? That's not the point. And um, sometimes at home, we just play a few cards. Or if we're out, you know, for a drink, it's an awesome way to connect very strongly together. And now we're so good at, at communicating with each other and also at communicating more difficult things that we just do it without actually flipping out because someone is trying to say something that is you know bothering them or that they're kind of struggling with at the moment and that is a good foundation to have in your relationship and again this card game helps so much and if you're single 
I would say get the Friendship Edition and or, you know, the Strangers, Strangers Edition or the Singles Edition. You know, when I was dating, uh, also like with my girlfriends, and I pulled the Friendship Edition out of my bag and said like, hey, you want to play a few cards? It was an awesome way to already get to know each other and to, yeah, see what she was like and for her to see what I was like, right? To sort of already see like, okay, could this be a person that is compatible with me? It helps to filter out actually a lot. And I, yeah, it's, uh, it's a great investment. It costs maybe like 35 euros uh, for one box, but it's been uh, one of the best investments in our relationship, I would say. You can find a link in the description, as you can find, about, uh, by the way, everything else of tools and systems, uh, you know, all of those will be in the description. Next on the list of tools to significantly improve your relationship is a board game, a spicy one. Uh, it's a sex board game. Here is uh, the website and the board game that I'm specifically talking about. They have a whole lot of other stuff and other board games as well. The vast majority of relationships, uh, sex is a part of the relationship, right? This board game is actually a very fun way to know more about sex. Because it's also a very, I would say, educational board game. Uh, there's some that you know is about sex. Uh, but there's also a lot of fun activities and explorative activities and tasks that you have to do together. It's an investment maybe with like 50 euros or something, but it's also like you can play this forever. Like the same with the card game, the end. Once you've gone through the 199 cards, you can just play them again, right? Because things have changed in your life. So the answer to the questions will probably change as well. And the same with the board game. Having a, a healthy and fun sex life together uh, is a strong foundation to have in place. Something that we do uh, every half year, uh, mainly on Valentine's Day, that's sort of our half year uh, time to do a half year review. And this consists out of three questions that we ask each other. Uh, and the first one is, what did we do well, you know, in the last uh, few months? What did we do well that we really liked? And Go to it through it together. Then the next question to ask is what can we do better or differently? So that's for the next, the, the coming six months, you know, uh, before you do another half year review. Uh, are there any things, you know, that you want to do differently together? And by the way, this is actually a very fun thing to do. Uh, the last few times we did this actually when we went out uh, and made sort of a, a a date night from it, right? Uh, we went to grab a drink, go and grab some cocktails or something or whatever you like. And then the last question to explore is current worries. Current worries that you have, you know, where you are at right now in your relationship or in your life or in your career life or something. These are three simple but very powerful questions to ask each other again, every six months, I would say. You can do this also, you know, every three months, I don't know, uh, but every six months feels right. The last tool, I mean, tool sounds maybe not, or is maybe not completely right on this, but let me just use it, is actually to find a shared hobby. Now, me and my girlfriend uh, just, we both love climbing. The first time that she actually went climbing was with me, so. Uh, that was a very fun kind of date to, to do together. Uh, and now, I mean, she goes more, she goes climbing more than me. She's, you know, becoming very, very good. And I'm very proud of her actually on the progress that she has made. It's so fun to be able to talk about the same kind of hobby to, you know, encourage each other when someone is, you know, on a route or to give each other tips on when they're struggling with a certain bowler problem and to just see each other's progress. It builds each other like together so much because you can talk about a shared sort of passion and hobby that you both love and enjoy. But there's other ones that we're, we're thinking about like salsa, for example. That's a very awesome one, I think, to, to do as a couple. But then I wrote a couple of other ones that uh, are actually really fun as well to do as a couple, uh, like acro yoga. Uh, oh, this is a very fun one too, I think, is actually... <laughs> making mu music together. Like, 
if your boyfriend or girlfriend can sing or or you know and and you can play an instrument and that's actually the case with me and my girlfriends uh, and that's something we also want to do more is to just make music together like she can sing pretty good and i can play pretty good you know guitar and piano and to just do that more as a shared activity as a shared sort of hobby i would say best is something where you kind of have to work together with you know like running well you don't really have to work together but maybe if you love boat running then you know go and do that together right with acro yoga you you both it's a, a combined thing that you do right and the same with music it's a combined thing that you create together and that just all together creates a very strong bonding I would say uh, we're running it's more of a separate thing so I would say try something yeah we're like a team sport or something that could be very fun I think as a couple now let's go over to the systems so these systems are actually uh, to make life as a couple easier and the first one is to actually have a shared calendar An important note is that this should not be used to constant, constantly like spy on each other or something. Uh, if you're doing that, that's not very healthy. Uh, this is just a very practical thing to kind of know each other's schedule, right? Always, again, communicate in person with each other before you 100% plan something. But it gives an overview of each other's coming weeks or days or even months. When I have to go to a hospital, for example, for another one of my checkups with my heart, she knows and she can already, you know, when her mom or her grandma or whoever of her family wants to plan a date, you know, to see each other and they're calling her, she already knows like, ah, yeah, okay, that day he can't because he has to go to the hospital or he has an exam or he has an interview or is doing something else. And the same, same goes for me, right? Now, how to exactly install this, I will put in the description because uh, she uses Apple, I use uh, Google Calendar, so it was a little bit of a thing to kind of synchronize both of them together. But there's a way, uh, and in the description I will link an article on how to do that, so check the description. Another one is to have a shared Google Photos album. I, I think like when we go on trips, we don't have to on WhatsApp or, you know, send the photos that I took and she doesn't have to send the photos that she took to each other. We can just drop it in the same Google Photos album and there we go. We kind of use those this album for everything as a couple that we do together. Like any vacation or any photos from, from us, like, I don't know, from a party that we did at our, at our place or something. That goes into the shared Google album that we have created. And then the next one is to have Splitwise. Uh, it's an app. They also have a website. But basically what Splitwise is, if you don't know it, it's to just uh, any expenses that you've made together when I paid for dinner, when we went out, it's automatically split. You know, so all the expenses that you make, uh, that we make as a couple that we want to share, you know, or any furniture that we buy, uh, like a couch or whatever, you know, all the things that we bought in our apartment, we can easily put in there and it's automatically splits and you know how much you still have to give to the other person. But this also goes for all the other expenses that we have, you know, the rent of our apartment goes in splitwise, electricity, the water, the gas. Splitwise does the thing to automatically calculate how much the balance is. It's so easy, you don't have to keep, you know, track yourself. That's just busy work, not very productive. This is a very easy way to have the financial things, you know, of what you owe each other and to have it done in a very fair way. Now I'm actually going to turn to my screen so you can actually see what I'm talking about as I feel like this should be visually experienced <laughs> or visually it's it's easier to explain what I'm talking about. There are so many kind of tasks that happen when you live together in an apartment or as a couple things that has to be done. We created a system in Notion to give an easy overview. Most things are mixed with English and Flemish so yeah if you don't get all the words that's that's normal. But like you can see, we have a to-do column here. We have an apartment column. We have a trips column. 
an events column and then the review column. So let me just go through, you know, each one. So the to do, the eat, this is eat, this is eat, uh, is basically just like the shopping that has to be done. And then we have different shops name. And then whoever is wanting to go to the shop knows the things that uh, have to be bought and can easily just check that off. Uh, and then there's this chef special week menu where we just have an overview of, okay, like who's gonna cook on that day? Who's reserving that day to cook? And we try to make it even, right? My girlfriend definitely cooks way more than me. Uh, she also likes it more. She's also the better cook between us. We don't really play with the, you know, some couples do like that week you have to cook, the other week you have to cook. We kind of go like, okay, who feels more in the mood to cook? And we play with emojis. Like I'm the Aquarius and she's the little, I don't know the exact name of it, but the little ghost. It's not really a ghost, but the sexy ghost, let's call it like that. Uh, but then we can easily see who's cooking on that day. Uh, let's go into Cinderella vibes. Uh, this is actually more the weekly to do things of like the, in the apartment, certain tasks like uh, cleaning, vacuum cleaning, cleaning the toilet, the shower, you know, dusting the apartment off. And then next to the arrow, we can put um, the icon again, the emoji of the Aquarius or the sexy ghost who has done it that week and then just check it off. Then we also have like a calendar legend here of all the icons. And then we have a calendar down there uh, that we use on who has, you know, done the toilet cleaning or the shower cleaning or who has done the vacuum cleaning. Uh, so we use the emoji from our legend here, that is the toilet. And then next to it, we write an arrow with Aquarius and an emoji with my girlfriend, the sexy ghost. And then we can put it here into the calendar, actually, to just have an overview. Uh, and in there, also, like, who is the cook on that day. Uh, and then you can write, actually, some additional, you know, texts if you want to, of course, uh, on what you're going to cook. Apartment, this is just some general info about our apartment, you know, like the contract of our apartment, uh, our, yeah or insurance, you know, and just other stuff. And decoration is just where we kind of put in. If there's any other things that we still want to buy, we kind of put it in there. You can add images to kind of a visual ID. It's a great way to sort of uh, put your both your contributions in on when you're shopping for a new lamp, you know, to kind of both look and then just put it in there and then go to together through it and see, you know, and select which ones you like. And then in trips, uh, category here is just the destination one that you can see here is just some suggestions things that we've thought about of cool trips and then the actual trips there are the actual trips that are happening or that have happened right the road trip to France has happened a few months ago the city trip to Lisbon is happening soon in there you can then add you know practical info of like the hotel that you're staying in the flight that you're taking or here in the road trip you know highlights that we both want to visit and also something that i really loved that we did is that we reflected once we came back from the trip on the trip like what did we like about the trip and what next time could we do better uh, and then the events category here is more just you know events like uh parties you know the housewarm party that we did or the costume party that we're planning and then we have party ideas just a list of other party ideas that we want to do at our Place like a movie night, board game night, uh, and then events activities are more like activities. Um, you know, we made two categories here of winter and summer. Some fun of activities to do in the winter, like going more to a sauna or an escape game, a board game night, um, a specific boulder gym that we wanted to explore, and anything else that we think about. And the same in the summer, you know, uh, what are some nice events and activities that you just whenever right think about that you want to do in the summer together write that down there and then we come to the last category and that's the half year review uh, and that's what i already shared uh you know what that's about uh, and here we also keep that the half year review that's the notion page that we have the shared one uh that it's just one place that has a lot of info about us as a couple that you can easily access that you can both edit and you know add things to whenever you want. Uh, it's sort of a living thing <laughs> as our relationship is. 
and that changes and improves through time. It's also awesome after a while to start seeing the list of events adding up, the list of trips adding up, and just everything else as your relationship is growing. We use Notion for this. There's probably other platforms that you can use for this too. Uh, if you don't like it, you know, to use this digitally, you can also just get a whiteboard, right? And make a system on there and just hang that on in your apartment or in your house. All right, these were the tools and the systems that I wanted to share here in this video that have improved my relationship with my girlfriend in so many amazing ways. A last thing actually that I want to say, there's actually two last things to end this video. Just a reminder that relationships take active work and maintenance. There's never going to be a point in your relationship where it's done. You've done it, you know, it's it's perfect now. It's And it's always going to be like that. There is always active work and maintenance gonna be there. But these tools and systems that I've shared are gonna be very, very helpful in the active work and in the maintenance of your relationship to keep it healthy and to keep it good. You need tools and systems to actually do that, to to, to, to stay like that uh, in a good relationship. I just wanted to share that to kind of sort of clarify a bit the importance on the tools and the systems that they are not alone fun and you will not alone really get to know your relationship or your partner better. It would also just over the long run maintain your relationship as a healthy one. Most of them are free. Some of them you have to pay something, but they're very inexpensive. Try it. That's all I can say um, and see for yourself. Sort of a last thing that I want to add to this, maybe like a bonus thing. I didn't really plan sort of on adding, adding this to the video, but an important trait to look to in a well-suited partner is to find someone who is plastic. And this might sound like a very funny word. With plastic, I don't mean to find a doll, like a plastic doll. Uh, I mean someone who is not fixed. That's an important trait, I would say. Uh, someone who is actually open for change, who is open-minded. And to be that as well, to not be fixed. If you're fixed in a certain mindset and a belief that things have to be that way and only that way it can be, that's for relationships not a very great trait uh, or skill sort of to, to have. But if you have someone who has that trait to be plastic, or that skill, as I do believe it's something that you can build up, you know, you can have an open mindset by knowing the benefits sort of of it. That's already one way of becoming more open minded, I would say. Like my girlfriend is very plastic. She's very open for change and seeing things in different ways. And I'm as well. I'm also not fixed. And sure, there's some things that might be more difficult to change my view in and for her as well you know, to a more healthier or better view. But I'm open and she's open as well. And that combination is another really amazing foundation to have in a relationship and to work on that if you're not. Uh, and if you're together with someone who isn't like that or if you're not like that, you can actively work on this as well. And I will actually link in the description uh, some videos and, and articles to get you started a bit on that. With that, I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you got something out of it. Let me know your, your opinion about this video uh, or if you have any, any other great tools or systems that has dramatically improved your relationship. Put them in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to click on the like button so people know that this is helpful or not. Uh, and as well, click on the subscribe button if you like this video and if you're looking for more upcoming awesome videos to come very soon. With that, enjoy your day and I hope to have you on another video very soon.